welcome along to another edition of Rugby League Back Chat and we're here at the pit in Leeds. We're joined this week by some of the most outspoken men in the world of Rugby League. The legend, Gary Schofield, <laughs> Mark Campbell, the chairman of Featherstone Rovers and the chairman of Lee Centurions is Derek Beaumont. Welcome along, guys. Good to have you with us. Uh, listen, let me start with a quote because we know there's been plenty going on in the world of rugby league in the last uh, seven days or so. The sport of rugby league now more than ever before needs its clubs and fans to rise and voice their opinions. This is quite possibly the most pivotal period in rugby league history. A quote from none other, as he remembers, from uh, Mark himself. Well, I, uh, I, I mean... I think just say is. what you mean by that. Hold on, just fill it in is. for people who, who don't know what's happened, because I mean there might be like one who's been in a cave or something <laughs> like that. Um, um, look, uh, Robert Elston was announced as the uh, new CEO of Super League on the 15th of May by none other than Everton Football Club, who, who pointed that out after 13 <laughs> years that the club he was leaving, uh, and he was unveiled officially at a press conference lasting a little under an hour uh, last week alongside Messrs. Lennigan and McManus and Moran. Um, the whole process, though, started at the back end of last year, didn't it, when Ian Lennigan wrote a letter to the Rugby League, which ended up with the uh, removal, if you like, or the leaving of Nigel Wood uh, and a sort of wheels being set in motion. Just give us well, I think, a few I thoughts. I think that about. letter went out uh, after Nigel had, had gone, right. uh, or, or Nigel had due to go, and the letter basically said that uh, Ian Lennigan wanted to take all the money from the Championship. Right. And that's what Super League money in his in his eyes, not the rugby leagues, not not the championships. So he wanted to take all the funding away from the championship, do away with the eights and the qualifiers, and go back to uh, well. At that time, he didn't he didn't really say what he was wanting to do. Yeah. And and at this moment in time, I still don't don't really know what what they want to do <coughs> apart from uh, in the last in the press conference with Robert Elson, yeah. they've said they're going to go back to one up one down. Yeah. Let's leave, we'll leave the um, details of the structure, you know, the, uh, the Super 8, yeah. just, just put it on the uh, park it for a little bit, because it's kind of a bit of a smokescreen, because there's a, there's a wider issue here, Derek, isn't there, which is Super League clubs saying uh, we should have more control, the broadcast contract really is with us, because the broadcasters <laughs> want to broadcast Super League, we should have more control of funds, we should have more control of running the game. That, that, that's really the power struggle, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, obviously, I was privy to a lot of, of that yeah, side of it. Yeah, you're a great man to speak to because <coughs> you're now uh, shoulder to shoulder with Mark in the championship. Yeah. But last season, you'd have been on the other side of the fence, wouldn't you? With obviously yeah, sitting yeah. next and to me and Lennigan. And there's always going to be self-preservation where people have got their own interests and their own clubs and their own money on on the line. But we have got to try and have two hats, and we've got to try and look at rugby league as a whole. And in in slight defence of, of Ian, he's never really said nothing for the championship and no recognition actually what he wanted to do was then bring the championship into it with super league as well and and kind well, of didn't he that put that in his letter that, that. Like, he put it in his letter that he wanted to remove the whole funding and met met championship one uh amateur yeah it was easy. It? that that was sort of like in the early part the letter that he sent there it was before nigel went by the way um, and, and basically we, we voted 75% of the votes, it was at Lee actually where it took place um, and, and that you know, put obviously Nigel in a difficult position yeah. and uh, Super League then uh, takes some power but bear in mind during all of that process there was probably every two or three weeks we was having a meeting about the new structure of the game, how it was going to go, what we was going to do and I've never been to as many meaningless meetings where at the end of it you know less than you started with um, but that letter was a strongly worded right. indication it, that it if things didn't change, you know, they, the Super League clubs would change it for them. It was, it, it, yeah, 100%, yeah. and it, it was setting that out clear. And, and to, to be fair as well, it's always dangerous when you put something in writing and send it out, right. that it ends up in the hands of people it wasn't intended for. As it did. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's lots of organisations <laughs> where, where that could be, yeah. could be the case. So Ian was, was being strong on it. There's, there's, there, there was a conception before and I use Mark as an example a number of times in Super League meetings with Ian and other people that there was a perception of, of clubs I think Batley and Halifax was the two that were mentioned where they've got into the, 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 the four for the middle eights and then not backed it up and they kind of wonder where that money's gone because the team hasn't really changed the following year yeah. so you know 
Kevin can, can explain, he, he spent money on the stadium and I'm sure Halifax have their answers, but to the Super League owners, they didn't know that. So Ian, you know, in particular saying, where's that going? And then you've got these start-up clubs getting, say, 75k, yeah. who some would argue aren't much different than, than an amateur team. So he was kind yeah. of looking at it, the, the word, the phrase that was used is, why should we, and, and I did myself even in Super League, increase my director's loan account? Yeah. So why should some Super League club owners increase the director's loan account? when somebody allegedly had some evidence that a, a certain championship club had decreased there significantly after finishing well, which which doesn't, you know... Just, 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 again, Matt, let's just get, just want to get Scoey's broad take on the whole shebang without going into the details of the, st the structural changes. What do you make, I mean, you're, you're first and foremost a great of the game, but mm. also a fan of the game. Absolutely. And so yeah. you're, you're sitting there watching it from the outside as, as a fan. Yeah, but also as well, Ron, Yeah, but I'm involved in a club as well now, Keith Cougars. Keith Cougars yeah. We're, yeah, we're, course, yeah. Championship, we're championship Fair one, point. and if we don't get that £75,000 a year, yeah. what the funding what we get, well, there'll be no professional right. sporting Keith, there won't be any professional yeah. clubs in that championship there, so for me, it's just pure greed. Well, there's been, the, it's just they, pure they've never said they're going to take. They guaranteed that though for the rest of the contract. Well, I, I think the, the, the super clubs think are guaranteed this, that. They're the money for the rest of the contract. Any, yeah. With, with any of this money for any club, clubs should have to have to deliver certain things yeah, yeah. to earn yeah. the money. Correct. No, you run as reserves. You run a. You're pushing for promotion. You're beating teams. Some of the other clubs are just. You wonder what they're doing with the money, yeah, and, well and the, they are yeah. virtually amateur club, yeah. and they're picking up the same money as a Keighley or well, the same the York or a we, Doncaster. You know, you're in the same league. Like we, we get seventy five thousand pounds. You might say, well, seventy five grand's not a lot. I'll tell you what, it certainly is to Keighley. Well, it you depends know, how much of a percentage of your players. total income, doesn't it? Really? Well, I'm yeah, just saying, yeah, but yeah. for the for the quality of players, what what, what yeah. we're looking to get to yeah. get that promotion in there, because yeah. you know, I've set out a journey and a three year visa for Keighley, you know, to to get into the championship. I'm not saying we're going to get promotion in the championship, but we need to be competing in the Champions League within three years because if not then I say there might be no professional sporting rugby league but one thing for sure if them clubs do not get that £75,000 then they certainly keep them they won't be in professional sport mm. yeah, well it's they, just they, not good they, they, and just listen, just, also as well uh, to Ron as well just listen to what Derek's saying there about you know, directors saying, where, where's this money, where's that money gone? Let's go back a few years' time, let's go back a few years. This is why Wigan Rugby League Club don't have their own home anymore. Yeah. What did they do back in the 80s and 90s? Bought all the best players, bought all the best... Was anybody asking Morris Lindsay? Was anybody asking the directors of Wigan then, what are you spending your money on? What are you spending your money on? The question I'd say, Ian Lennigan, is, why ain't you, you got your own home anymore? Well, because you spent money, what you wasted. Well, there, was, there was no It's all for the good of the Rugby League, what yeah, these dealers are. I'll tell you what, Derek, I would just ask you as well, because... There's been uh, a lot of talk, and, and, and Scoey's just articulating it there, saying about, you know, oh, they're, they're trying to claw back money from lower league clubs, they want to remove that. Isn't it true that what the Super League clubs are actually trying to claw back is money that's being spent by the Rugby League on like what you'd call a service contract uh, yeah. for servicing the it, game, and th they've identified that they think money that is currently being, they think the Super League clubs being given yeah. to the RFL... That was uh, they, they think they could spend that more wisely themselves, isn't that one of the key elements? Yeah, the, 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 issue, the issue really as a whole was how commercially well yeah. is Super League being run by the RFL compared to how that group of owners might think they could do it. When I was involved in Super League in 2005, every single owner or chairman was a director of Super League Europe, so I don't know when that changed, but basically it's just gone back um, to that. So th the, issue, the issue really uh, for me is how things have been gone about really yeah. when, when you're in a, a process I mean, Super League's put things up there the RFL is saying where the money's gone look me and Mark are both smart enough to know and I think all of us in here the brand of rugby league that's worth anything is Super League okay it needs underpinning it has to have grassroots yeah. it has to have champ one it has to have uh, league one sorry it has to have the championship it, it is a collective thing but that is what is attracting the money I mean Sky ain't even bothered about showing uh, our games but for Summer Bash and, and, and the qualifiers so you know we have to accept that and then they're looking at how can they better that and better the sport by having more money I, I and totally agree things. with that I, I agree with what Eamon said about it is the pinnacle of the sport and you want it mm. to thrive but everything else has got to underpin it absolutely yeah, yeah. you absolutely. can't have some at the yeah. top no foundations in it mm. and that's why it, it, and, and the amount of money what the championship gets really isn't a, in the big picture of things it isn't a, it isn't a fantastic amount of money I think um, it, just just to uh, clarify I think uh, I'm right in saying this is going off memory now 750 to the team that finishes top of the 750,000 is it yeah, yeah. 700,000 yeah. goes down 500 and then, and and then, then 450 to, yeah it goes yeah. 450 but then the lower half of the division is yeah, substantially two. less yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've got to get you've got to make clubs grow 
You've, you've got to make, they've got to earn the money. Yeah. They've got absolutely got to earn right, the money. Right, you see also as well, uh, Mr. Elson did an interview, didn't he, on Thursday night, which, before the game. He did, he Salford. spoke, spoke he did, to Brown no, County. No, yeah, he was yeah. live, live on yeah. television, yeah. the broadcast from there on yeah. Thursday night. Yeah, that's right. And he was at the game, Witness and Salford. That's and right. Derek Smith said, here now, yeah, Super League is a product, so yeah, I'll buy into that, talking about the elitism. But I'll tell you what, when you looked at that game on Thursday night and when you looked at their two clubs, there's no quality there. Well, they bring it to Super League then. No, but I tell you, I know I'd rather watch it times. I'd rather watch right. some top ch championship well, games. Yeah, yeah, but I, I totally agree with Gary because <laughs> when 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 clubs go on about when Ian Leonard and and Eamon go on about you're preventing investment into the game. Well, look how much investment's coming to uh, the championship mm. since this new structure, mm. and some of the bottom bottom end cl sub play clubs are having to invest because otherwise they're, they're yeah. going to they're going to lose a place. Correct. And, and if they can possibly invest, I mean, I don't know what's happening with Salford, I don't know what's happening with Witness, but but they're going if they don't invest and they don't improve the squads mm. and the teams, they're going to they're going to lose a place. I'll tell you what, 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 what for sure, and qualifiers. You two guys, the chairmen of the Feverson and Lee, you have to tell you what, you'd fancy Salford and win this, wouldn't you? Definitely. To, to go into Super League, mm. without a yeah. doubt. Well, that's struggling the, at the, the bottom, the, isn't it? But I mean, the, the old thing with that structure, though, is, and I, and I experienced it in 2004, yeah. the old route beating Whitehaven in a grand final, found ourselves in October, yeah, we're in Super League, no players available, yeah. other than picking off who's got relegated, that doesn't get you anywhere, we wasn't competitive, we came down. In this format, getting up the same way and coming down in it, so yeah. I, I, I'm quite experienced about all the different facets of it, yeah. We were competitive in Super League. Yeah. We didn't finish bottom, so in this new format, we'd still be in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think the, 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 there is a, a genuine issue, and I do share the Super League owners' concerns that to lose a third yeah. of your of your competition potentially, it's not happened, and I don't think but it would happen. But any outcome is possible. But 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 is is there not an essence of saying? If you're not good enough and someone in the game's better, if we want to improve the game and have a better brand and better yeah. quality players, like Gary's just said, and what Robert said, then if two, three, or four of those teams are currently in the wrong division, then why shouldn't yeah. they come okay, up we'll with we'll come on to that yeah. structure thing just a bit right in a minute. I, but I just but want to I, check is, is anyone disputing what Robert Elston's um, key plank of his argument was that, like the Premier League football, the attraction of fans and broadcasters is to the elite league and that then helps grow the, the league from the bottom because things filter down because that's the whole premise of the argument isn't it if the, if, the, if the Super League is stronger and vibrant and everyone wants to watch it then more people come in and want to play rugby league and watch rugby league and everyone benefits one of the, like best, the, league. That's one his argument, one of the best points I've heard in the last few months was Eddie Hearn saying we haven't got any superstars yeah. and, well, and kids right. aspire yeah. to be superstars and that that would have uh, that would have a really good point and, and mm. when I look back to Gary's area, the, the well, world, it, you could you, name ten superstars. If you, if you went where, on, where if you walked down now? Oxford Street and said to a hundred people, name a rugby league player, mm. would the most common answer still be Ellery Handley or Martin Afire? <laughs> not well, like well, well, or not Bush. <laughs> no, 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 who? Who? who <laughs> Gary? Gary? <laughs> but I mean, what my, my point is, would anybody yeah. say yeah. George but Williams or Callum Robbins? No, 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 I'm not sure that though yeah. is that, like, and, and this is not in any way disrespectful to Sky because w without them, the, this sport wouldn't be anywhere near where it is now. But it is limited amount of people that watch it on that platform. You know, if you if you get the Challenge Cup yeah. and you've got three million watching yeah. it as opposed to yeah. hundred thousand for a Super League game, yeah. so how big is the potential audience? So is is there a, is, is there a trade off there? Do you take less money for your TV deal so you get a bigger audience and eventually grow it? The answer is no, because financially, unless you've got a lot of people yeah. putting a lot of money so, in, uh, you can't. Are you, are you saying, and are you, are you guys agreeing that? Uh, the, mod the broadcast contract model that the Premier League has, say, for example, or, or football. The Premier League has several different contracts, as we yeah. know, the Sunday afternoon Spread slot, it. the Friday slot, the, mm. sun the Saturday yeah. night slot. But also, of course, the Championship has a separate broadcast deal. Do you think that that will happen at the end of the current broadcast deal in three years' time? I I'd like to see it happen before yeah. then. Yeah, and right. and if, if we're not showing the Championship, we need to show it. Mm. And we need, to, we need to look ahead to 2021 and use then three years to uh, to see what's out there and grow our brand. But do you think you'll be able to, do you think you've had to raise enough? Because you're uh, roughly now you're getting five. The, the lower league clubs are getting five million from the broadcast deal. Roughly. Yeah. Do you think that the, the championship and uh, the league one could raise five million in broadcast revenue? At this moment in time, no. Right. It wouldn't start okay. that way, Rod. But but were the you, you can't. The Championship doesn't want to be looking or considering breaking away from Super League and, right. and everything like that. that that's not going to be healthy because straight away, if you look at the dual registration situation, what a lot of clubs benefit from. Yeah. So not only do the Championship clubs benefit from that, so do the Super League clubs because they've got somewhere for their players yeah. to play without the reserves. Going into a different argument, I know. But we've got to all stick together. So what we need yeah. to do, and what's disappointed me, 
is that given there was a process of discussions after a proposal set out by Ian and, and Eamon um, of what they thought was the right way, which they've now uh, got Robert to declare, which probably just puts pressure, but you know, hey look, we all can play commercial hardball. It's derailed a little bit of that, and then it's got obviously responses which I'm not criticising Mark for because he's a strong, passionate guy, and uh, many other people. And I just don't think that's been healthy. I think we could have kept it back and discussed it. And, yeah. and if, if it has to be that you know this structure isn't right, then there needs to be some little trade-offs for the championship to look at it and to say, well, you know, look, we need one year's immunity so that when we're up, we can recruit. Uh, that jeopardises mm -hmm. yeah. two teams instead of four. So here's a little bit, a bit of a bit like movement. the Catalan time and when they first started. Yeah, you yeah know, exactly. Yeah. And, and can we have, you know, Sky don't want to show our games in the championship. You've given Toronto some freedom uh, to have it. Can we stream our games? Can we do something, whether it's with you guys or, you know, this free sports channel's great now and you've got uh, Alex Simo and stuff, what he's doing there with the, the conference. Is there a route to market there? We, oh, we don't yeah. get the money in the first place, but we then have a product that's watched, that's got you know, 80,000 people watching it or whatever it is, and then we've got something we can mm. sell. And absolutely perfectly summed up as ever there by Derek Beaumont. Thanks, Derek. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get on to the, uh, the debate about the Super 8s and Mark's strong comments on those in a moment or two. But we must take a break, but we'll be back in a couple of minutes here on Rugby League Batcher. to a rugby league back chat from the pit here in Leeds in the company of Gary Schofer, Derek Beaumont and Mark Campbell. Okay, uh, the Super 8s, the great debate. We talked back about the uh, the press conference that uh, Rob Elston, uh, Ian Lennigan and uh, Eamon McManus and Simon Moran had uh, the week just under an hour. But the, the bit that got all the headlines was about this uh, announcement by Ian Lennigan that uh, the Super 8s were on the way out. We actually invited Ian to come on but he declined so I'll say what he said. Uh, he said that they basically had uh, an 11-1 vote, uh, that they wanted the, rid of the Super 8s, the one was Leeds, uh, they don't want a situation where four teams could go down, that's what Derek was mentioning in part one, uh, and so the Super 8s were gone. Uh, after that, well they were queuing up from the Super League side to agree with Ian Lennigan and on the other side where well, Gary Hetherington said it was an absurd grab for power by a small number of men who think they own the game. Uh, Batley said it was uh, an amateurish farce. Uh, the Hunslet chairman was involved as well and Mark you were at the absolute forefront of the battle charging into the battlefield. Uh, well I thought it was a, a ridiculous, a ridiculous com press conference. Yeah. The announcing this new guy was going to take the game forward and then Lennon uses it to have a pop at Leeds yeah. and comes out with 11 to 1 vote, which, which is factually wrong. Uh, it, was just, it was just an absolute farce. And then and coming out, uh, we thought this new structure's all agreed mm -hmm. and it's, we're going back to one up, one down. When nothing's been agreed, we, we're in discussions, we have, have no proposal on the table whatsoever of actually how anything's going to, what it's going to be like and how it's going to work and how we're going to benefit from it or, or indeed any of the criticisms I've got about this new structure, they've not set out why or give us any numbers or any, any proof that it isn't yeah. working when it seems to work in pretty well for a lot of other clubs. Has, has anything happened or has there been any discussions since the press conference and since your statement or Gary Everton's statement, has anyone talked to anybody since? No. Not at all. Right. Uh, what I found bizarre, well, Brian Barwick not being there. Yeah. You know, the the chairman of Super League is not there with his chief with his new chief exec. And why why would you need the other clubs? And why would you need Ian Leonard and using it to have a pop at, at Leeds? I, I, I just was speechless when I read it, when I saw the the conference. And then I listened to uh, Dave Woods interview uh, Elston for yes. half an hour. Yes. And he talks about how he's been in, been in, been in spot following sports since he was an EI to Grasshopper. Uh, he actually worked for Rugby League in '95, and then, but it, it, 
when they were asked how what's wrong with the game, oh, it's too early to tell you. Yeah. Well, what's he been <laughs> bloody doing for years? <laughs> I, I, I was, I thought he'd right. been brought in to right. to, to, to mm. improve the commercial yeah. aspect of soul play. Right. Surely, think, yeah. oh, surely you would. I think, I think you'd have a view on that. But also, but also, but also, exactly. But also, as well, Rod and, uh, and Mark and, and Derek as well. When you look at the uh, one of the best administrators that's been in the game for many, many years in Gary Evington, I just feel as though me disrespectful to Gary Evington, disrespectful to Leeds Rugby League Club, because let's let's yeah. just make no bones about this, Leeds Rugby League oh. Club are the biggest club in the game. Don't worry about that, you know, so so the disrespect saying from the right. Leeds, Leeds are against this. What You know what Leeds are against? Leeds are against the good, of, the good of the game in Rugby League whatsoever. And so to be disrespectful to Gary Evington saying, and he said on Thursday night when I saw the interview, well, if Leeds want to come on board, they could come on board. How disrespectful is that well, to no, Gary Evington no, to Leeds? No, well, he said, well, Robert Elson he said, said this on Thursday night on the broadcast. He said it. I know. What he said was that Leeds were a great club and they hoped that they would be able to... You know, they were a great club. They, they still are a great club. Right. They are, he said they are a great club. <laughs> they're the, they're one of the leading clubs in the competition and, and he hoped that they would be able to talk to them and bring them into the into the fold. But he seemed, oh, to, make bring them into the he fold. seemed to make it clear to me that if Leeds didn't want to be part of it, that was up to Leeds. That's all they're going to do, kick Leeds into the Championship well, or Division well, 1. Well, he, he, he appeared Pathetic. to be saying if Leeds didn't want to be in the, in, in the part of it, then don't be part of it. To, oh, be f so to, to be fair to Gary, to be fair to Gary Everington, and I, I mean, I've well, what, what, what can Gary? Hold on a bit. What I'm asking you, because you'll be a good person, I do What can Gary Everington? If Gary Everington is what options he actually yeah, he got? Has to, Gary has to stick by his beliefs. Right. Having worked, having worked well, at the side of Gary, got? Gary is every bit 100% right. a game-wide man. That's so, right. in, in, as, as above self-preservation, Leeds are a, yeah. a, a massive big club, etc. Yeah. But I've heard him speak about various things, and obviously there's a lot of this was, was discussed. And he has his views, which he's strong of, and he doesn't agree with what's going on. He didn't agree with the, the way we voted. Uh, but, you know, in life, it's a That's democratic a situation, yeah, yeah, and, and we have to go with, the, with that, which yeah. I think he has. He's, he's not come out and slammed anything right. until something's happened that he's had no knowledge of that, that's factually incorrect. And then he stood well, his ground strongly on it. So, yeah. but, but what gets me with Elston is that he's, he's coming to the job, been in it two minutes. Yeah. Not, not, he hasn't sat down with the RFL and actually learnt the facts of the TV deal or anything. And he started going around and meeting the CEOs and doesn't even know the facts. Right. I, well, the, the, I, word, the word on the street, if that's still an expression, um, from the, the, is that the RFL will go for one at one down. The, the, let me just say this to you. When, 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 I, when I stated all these meaningless meetings that I went to, which right. was like banging your head against a brick wall, yeah. my understanding was that there was a desire to appoint a chief exec of Super League to yeah. represent the Super League owners in their best interest, right. not for us to tell him what he had to do. So he leads by example, yeah. looks at it and says, right guys, I think you should do this. And then we accept and this it. Is what, um, Mark said well, that he thought in your piece, and I'm, I'm not misquoting you here, that you've perhaps he, Mr. Elston is a puppet of Mr. Lennigan. Well, I, I, from, all, them, from yeah. all what I've read and seen in press conferences and with Dave Woods's interview yeah. with uh, Robert Elston, yeah. I would absolutely guarantee it is a What puppet. do you think? Do you think he's his I own would, man and he won't I, be messed around? I, I wouldn't. Elston? I, I don't know Robert uh, well right. enough, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that he's been as successful as he has in his life, if that's the case. Right. That being said, Ian is, is a strong character, he's, he's a strong businessman, as is uh, Eamon, and they're quite strong on, on how if they want to drive it. So if he's been recruited for Super League clubs to act on behalf of Super League clubs, and he's got strong voices in his ear in the first place yeah. then surely he would be naive to come into this sport and not listen to the 12 well, hours that, I know for that be but he should expand it beyond that he should if be engaging with himself in business, myself i'd want to start start in the right way yeah. and i wouldn't let anybody dictate to me how i start my new job yeah well, he, even though somebody's he, paying he, me he, he could well have looked at this and and those meetings notes and thought that one up one down is the way they should go because 12 of us were getting nowhere with agreeing anything right but for me yeah. and there has to be some surety so for me if i'm doing robert's job i'm not coming out making statements like that if i'm privy to the fact that there's some negotiations behind the scenes yeah. but what needs to happen quickly for super league without bringing in an all new argument is we need to get some real changes to stop this piggybacking penalties uh, down and, and, and one thing and another, which is a separate thing. That's one thing you That's should look at. To make it yeah, more entertaining yeah, yeah, and attractive, yeah. to bring bums on seats, yeah. which is what everyone wants. And Definitely then secondly, he should set out very clearly and very methodically 
what the best format for this competition is right. that he can then go and gauge some interest across all the media yeah. partners and we should be doing this not in 2021 right we should be putting together and my, i think that the answer we was looking at 14 teams which i thought was the way it was maybe going to go and uh, we threw a curveball in of 10 10. Yeah. for me the championship at the moment is so strong and i'm, and mm. I'm in it and struggling with a team on a super uh, bigger than some super league salary caps i'm spending yeah. and we are struggling you know, well, you've, you got, you've, you've got right. six. You've yeah. got six solid sides. Well, we're six. You know, you've got six yeah. solid sides there. Yeah, you're about to start. And yeah. we did. We, but you know, it's still difficult. We've just gone to Toulouse and only won by two. Yeah. So, it, it, make no mistake about it. It's very tough. And we've got six real contenders yeah, yeah, for the yeah. top it's a strong four. Top, yeah. And then there's a couple behind it. We've got yeah. Bradford sat outside but in Champ One but who can come I mean, and. You're agreeing with my, yeah. my mantra, which is that yeah. everyone should sit down with a blank sheet of paper and decide what they want the game to look like well, yes. and what, on the field and what they want the structure to be. And start yeah. with a blank sheet, like go in a room and thrash exactly. it out and start, and don't like, start and then deliver that. I'd like to see Robert Elson come in and actually meet all the meet the RFL, find out the ins, ins and outs mm. of the deal, yeah. Yeah. then go and round and met the Championship and the and so League. And and then and then sit down himself and come out with mm. with a, with a couple do? of formats. Right. Okay. But, but, but at the moment right. we're in a situation here, right, where they the Super League clubs are saying the Super Eights are finished and we're not playing it, and you guys in the Championship and League One are saying, well, we are playing it. Now, our this, look, everyone knows that I work in darts, and it's starting. To, I'm, my mind's wandering back to the early '90s when the famous darts split from the VDO, when, yeah. the, when what's now the PBC was formed, and it's a subject of a documentary called "Blood on the Carpet," aptly named. <laughs> um, and I'm thinking, is well, but are we going to get in a situation where the Super League and, and the Championship clubs and, and the oh. League One clubs are in that kind of well, it split? It, is it that possible? That way, is it possible? Yeah. Somebody 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 that way, to me does that, said, does that, is that the worry? Is that rugby league can end up like Speedway? Well, where nobody actually right. knows it still exists. Yeah, well, We've, we have got to be smart and careful, and, and the right. value of that product. What happens if you know we get to 2021, and, and Ian's a smart guy. He's, he knows through mm. football, negotiating with Sky, yeah. etc., yeah. and, and other avenues. If we get to 2021 and they ain't interested at anywhere near the level of money that we're currently talking, and as a sport we can't find it, what happens to the sport? Because hmm. all these players' agents aren't going to go, oh, okay, well, you've not got enough money now, so we'll all take less, when they've got a bona fide contract. So every club could potentially be in a situation where it's hmm. put towards a sort. Right. And given we're all entering three-year deals with players, yeah. now is the time to start to know what's going to happen behind 2021, because it's irresponsible. Of, of a club owner, a custodian of a club, to enter into a contract that it may not be able to actually finance because we don't know what we can do in 2022 no, no. as a sport at this moment so in time. So how, how worrying it, I mean, will there be a resolution? Will there be a sensible resolution between all the parties or will it yeah, be well, we, we on the carpet? In no, we need the RFL to, right. to, to pop, mediate. To pop up, pop their heads right. up. <laughs> And actually mm. govern the, the game. That's why we need a, a there governing is, body. There's a there's a part of Eamon McManus's um, uh, quote uh, where he responds to Gary, uh, two twofold uh, that's significant in all of this, if if you ask me. And first of all, he says about um, having to um, a competition forced upon them that they don't uh, want to have. That that's not not good when it's done by us who they're financing. So th there's two parts to that. Um, and, the, and the first part is that you know it's a contract, so it's an agreement that yep. all parties did, and you have to be honourable. That's your intentions when you sign it, so you have to see it through. And the second part of that is that living in the real world, if you realise that you're in a contract or forcing a contract upon someone that isn't in your best interest ultimately, then it is worth re-engaging and renegotiating that that. Uh, document. But to do that, and Derek, you've got to sit down with people and, and come to some, find some yeah, common yeah, ground, one hundred percent, and do a bit of trade off. Yeah, because because I don't think it's going to be healthy for for us as a championship, and that's where I sit right now. I've got aspirations, but nothing's in any way set to stone. And even if I was back in Super League as a Super League owner, as I tell you, I always spoke on behalf of the championship yeah. sides and, and what they thought. If if we're going to do anything, we need to look and say, well, look wiping a third potentially that competition out. The uncertainty both ways ain't any good. So the pitfalls are the fact that you can't recruit, so you need a year of immunity. We need something back on, on the TV side, yeah. and we need something a bit longer, some assurances on the minimum standards being set in stone, what they are beforehand, so it's not a moving thing that dictates who comes up and who doesn't. And get things together and say, right, on the basis that you're gonna continue looking after us as what, the, the lower the, what's leagues. The, what's the best format? Hmm. What's the, 
What is, it might, the answer for might me, be... For me, it's 10s. You've got there to keep might, There might be super eights. It might be the answer, but I don't, keep, I don't like it. Keep, but I, 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 not, for for me, I answer. wouldn't change it just yet. Right. I think there's there's a couple of uh, teams that, that are, are, are vulnerable. Salford without Marwan yeah. are, so are you vulnerable. Want, you, want three, you want first division of 10... I'll call that. Ultimately, no, first, second, third well, division, call them what you well, like. Not, ten, ten, ten. What I'd like to see is and next. Up and down. I'd like one to see in, in nineteen. I'd like to see it stay the same as it is. Right to give you time. And, to and during it. this yeah. period of time, yeah. we put it oh, all I together. Agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to think that Bradford's got out of uh, right. Championship right. One. Even York are, are looking very good. Right. So that in League One, sorry, into the Championship yeah. to see how they they keep, fill keep up. And if there is, and if there is another overseas team like your Toronto model that's going to be uh, strong. Or, you know, and you've got your, your Batleys and, and other teams, Jesus. you've basically got three, um, you've got your divisions that split and yeah. you get 50% of your parachute as a parachute yeah. payment if you come down from three to two, two to one. Yeah. Division one, division two are full-time clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Division three uh, most likely starts as a, a part-time club. And we've got something that we go and we yeah. sell. And whether you're not, you, you're bringing jeopardy into that in terms of a playoff yeah. uh, before you get your it's automatic yeah, promotion. Yeah. All of those are mechanics that we can all discuss and add to it but we become masters of our own destiny because we put down how the game's going to be and how it's going to be forward and we all agree to that yeah. principle. What do you think yeah. is the best format going? Well to be honest with you the way that uh, it's, it's sold it's by gone, going by then, one uh, just, just keep it it's, it's, it's for now. You but want to super eight for another but, year. But my, but my main concern is, is for the good of the game as a whole yeah. and quite simply when you listen to, to Lennigan and McManus and Sam around from there, they couldn't care less about the Championship or the Championship one. They're getting greedy, there's no respect from them. Certainly what they're saying about Leeds from there. You've got, to, you've got to do it for the good of the game as a whole. Whatever formats have come up with, everybody, as Mark Campbell has said, and also two here now doing it, everybody get around the table and come up with a common solution that everybody's happy with and it gives everybody an opportunity to get where they want to. Because yeah. certainly the two chairmen here, what we've got, they're ambitious. Of course we want to be part of the big boys, but sometimes it may not happen. It may not happen because maybe lack of quality of players, but still, don't take that ambition away from them. At this moment in time, then what they are proposing, it's quite simple. They want to make themselves bigger, they're getting right. so greedy, they forget about the rest. Fin it's totally wrong. Final question on this point. If, if they came to you now and said, right, 14 teams in the Super League next season, so we're actually going to, and we're going to put six out of the, Super, of the middle eights into the Super League, mm -hmm. okay, so that would increase Super League to 14 teams, which would give Featherstone and Lee probably, if you're both in, which you may or may not be, a better chance of being in the Super League next season, would you then vote for it? No, I'd keep it the same right. for next year. Okay. Would you, would you uh, vote for that? Because it give you a better chance of getting back in yourself? It, I don't think that's the, the ultimate answer. And Come that's, on, yes that, or no? That's right? why we didn't. It, it, I think you're buying votes. I think yeah, well, you, that's you're buying a yeah, vote. That's I, what I'm suggesting. Yeah. I think what happens it? there, if you do that, you kill off the, the, the championship right, and where okay. it's grown to. That's what you do. You cut it off. You don't want a 14 No, no. I think we've got to... It's a shame because we've got six real, you know, almost full-time right. uh, clubs that, that, that are competitive. competitive. Yeah, this middle eight this year mm, is cool. going to be an umdinger of a middle well, eight. Absolutely. Okay. And, and yeah. I'm not just talking about testing against Super League sides. Right. I'm talking about the championship. Well, right. you've, got, you've got championship yeah. one. What's they've got eight top teams, eight right. nine teams. And do, and do you know what? As well, no, 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 we're going to stop. We're going to stop. I tell you what we'll do. I'll do a trade trade off. I'll do a trade off. Trade trade off. Buy your vote. I'll buy your vote. Uh, in the next part, we're talking about Great Britain. You can rant lots about Danny Richardson. How about that? England. Okay, we're going to have another break here on uh, Rugby League Back Chat. Back in a couple of minutes to talk about England's Test match in Denver, of all places, against New Zealand. Join us in a couple of minutes. to Rugby League Bat Chat in the final part of the show after all the politics games of Rugby League will break out uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a, a, a quick thought for, for you guys on the, the championship on the field because um, a really good win for you in Toulouse very important win Derek and a, and a cracking win for you Mark at home yeah. to, to Barrow so um, as you were mentioning in the other parts guys uh, 
that six teams at the top with Toronto are going to get one of the spots obviously aren't yeah. they so there's there's five teams scrapping over three spots so you're in third at the moment Mark so yeah. uh, sitting nicely but not much breathing space and no. after, I mean, last time you were on back when I was talking to you you were, you were bang at the, you know you'd, you'd lost, <laughs> lost five games I think. yeah yeah, well, yeah it's all about packing in you very yeah. well, you were about you said you'd, you'd walk away and make the top four and, and I keep looking out and you, and you keep winning but you, you're not managed to get into the top four because the other teams are winning it's, yeah, it's yeah. a pretty exciting race guys isn't it the yeah. Yeah, it's good. and that doesn't change when you look at the fixtures that doesn't change over the next couple of weeks our position doesn't improve because the points difference London have got yeah. but the teams we're playing we're not going to change that um, and the teams that the, the teams around us are playing, you would expect them to win. So yeah. I don't think the picture is going to change too too much. But then there's quite a lot of these guys. I mean, Mark's got to go to Halifax. He's got to go yeah. to Toronto. He's got London coming to him. Mm -hmm. So um, not being disrespectful to anyone, the, you know, we talked about defending a win over in Toulouse and right. getting that desperation monkey off our backs because every week has been a grand final because you know if we don't make the four then it's not sustainable yeah. for me to, to stay at the yeah, league with, with what's committed yeah. and that, yeah. that hasn't changed but I'm fighting 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 I'm still trying to recruit I've put financial offers in for a couple of players yeah. um, and you know we'll, we'll look to strengthen like we did the year the year we got up but it's real tough and uh, I think the winning to lose was, was very significant because it enables us to you know, if we don't get a win in Toronto, it isn't going to kill us off. No. Um, I think we can still do it from there. How do you see it, Mark? It's, you know, it's, uh, I don't I, know, I, I as a fan, it's I, exciting, but if you're the owner or well, chairman of the club, it's not quite as, well, as it, cut and dried like that, is well, it? Well, when the snow structure came in, it was about uh, every minute matters, is and it, it absolutely matter? does. Yeah. Uh, I, I was sat there on on Sunday, and if he'd offered me 54 points again, Barry, before the game, I'd have, I'd have snatched your hand yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm watching the game, I'm thinking we could have scored another 20 or 30. And Which and might and be important I, on the points difference. And I think it'll be, it yeah. may, it, I think it'll probably come down a points yeah. difference for that last, last place. Yeah. So I was sat pretty frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're winning fifty. Yeah. He's a demanding man, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> Never happy. Yeah, you both got away games this weekend. So look at the fixtures. You should be playing Lee and Sheffield play Featherstone. Right. Also at the uh, weekend. Right. Just wind him up and watch him go here. Um, Den <laughs> <laughs> in Denver. In Denver. Uh, England play New Zealand. Uh, now, New Zealand with Michael Maguire now at the helm have mm. left out uh, a number of their big hitters, including uh, the fantastic Sean Johnson and Roger Tavisa Shek. Um, and England, Scoey have same so old, many same old, didn't same it? Old, same yeah, old, same old, same old with England. And say, from New Zealand's point of view, new coach from there. We all know it was a disastrous World Cup for them, wasn't it? You know, and they got rid of the coach. Maguire's come in, seven new deputants, and they say so. They want to put a mark down, certainly for from an international point of view, for their international careers. So they'll be certainly wanting in, in to impress. And England again, same old, same old. And when this England squad got announced, I think it was around about nine weeks ago, wasn't it? You know, uh, Kevin Kevin Sinfield now was the director of rugby. Says the door's always open uh, for players who, uh, if they show the form, they should be selected. Well, if you look at some of the players who've been selected for England. They're not informed, are they? Right. Who do you John? want in? Right. Well, obviously, well, do you want to quick, I'll quickly whiz through it. Bateman, Sam Burgess, Tom Burgess. George Burgess was in, but then got injured and replaced by Scott Taylor. Connor, Graham, Hall, Hill, Lomax, Makinson, McGilvery, O'Loughlin, Percival, Ratchford, Roby, uh, Luke Thompson, Whitehead, Widdop, Williams, mm. George. Yeah, I know, I, know, I, know, I know what the squad is, but yeah, obviously... But, but obviously, not, not, obviously, not, obviously, obviously, uh, obviously the big one's uh, Young Richardson, isn't it? Right. Because... Uh, Wayne Bennett, as we know, what record Wayne's got as a coach, he's been one of the best coaches ever, don't worry about that, but which international coach goes uh, without a specialist number seven? We've gone without a specialist number seven, George Williams now we've found out is injured, so now the halfback partners is going to be Widdop and Lomax, well that's absolutely pathetic, Lomax has been proven yeah. that he's not a quality, a quality number six on there, so, and what, what I heard over the weekend as well, and the rumour speculated, is that St Helens and England had a meeting to say, Danny Richardson, it's too early for him. He's 22 years of age. He's the form scrum half in Super League. He should sling him in the deep end and let him see yeah. what he can do. And you're looking at form players. Right. Ryan Hall and McGilvey, they say, same old, same old. They've not been in good form, but Josh Charlie should have been selected for me on the win from there, the try scored him from there. So again, we, it's just the same old, same old. Well, you said the, the, the same, not, same but, old, same old, yeah. but bear in mind, the same old, same old got within a oh, you're gonna tell me, of Australia. Oh, yeah, they got to six points. Yeah, well, well, I'm just saying, well, the score We only got beat by four points 
in 1992. We're still yeah. miles away. So don't, don't give me that rubbish <laughs> from, from that point of view. So that if, I don't believe in stats. At the end of the day, the most right. important stat is the scoreboard. They still got beat 6 They did lose. And let yeah. me tell you, they by the lose, way, yeah. no, that was the worst Australian performance right. in a World Cup final since 2008 when New Zealand beat them. Right. So let's not get too carried away <laughs> right. with the 6 0 scoreline. Right. So the big factor, again, on Saturday night is how are we going to play? Right. Are we just going to play the boring rugby league like we played in the World Cup? Because it was boring. Yeah. There wasn't right. a, a lot of creativity. Luke Gale is not there with no for injury, but at this moment in time, the question marks on him about a, a, a quality halfback. Yeah. Where's the creativity going to come from? The wingers are going to be used like battering rounds from there. Yeah. New Zealand will look to impress, but the big point is why is it Danny Richards a big pick? Because he's a quality well, in number seven. He's, he's only, we, we don't have too many number seven, and he's in great form. Well, he's pretty much stuck with, apart from play, like obviously, yeah, Kevin, old, Kevin Brown old. retired and Luke yeah. Gale's injured, just to name, but Alex Wormsley was in the World Cup uh, 17 and he's, he's injured. Utmost respect for Wayne, as, as uh, yeah. so he says there, but. Is it not a time where you know what you've got in the World Cup there and it wasn't enough for Australia, whether they're how poor they were or weren't? Yeah. And if Gary gets that revved up at the weekend in that game, we'll not know who's <laughs> lining up and get him and tell you. But it, you better run the right line. So it, but it, I, I think, I mean, he, he, he has been the form halfback, hasn't he? You know, Saints yeah, are, Saints are the, the form team. Yeah, yeah. They're playing good rugby, they're scoring good tries. Um, I think it was a, a chat. 22, how many games did you play by then? I, mean, I played for Grey about 15, 16 times by the time I was 22. So what, what, age, about what age is a kid going to be ready? Should they, you know, should they, they have a little opportunity out? for him, isn't it? Yeah. No pressure. You oh, know, just throw him you in. know that uh, Williams, as you rightly pointed out, Williams has now arrived in Denver and found he's got a knee injury, mm. or they've found he's got a knee injury, so it'll now be uh, Ratchford at fullback, won't it, and Lomax and Winner. You would have thought so. Right. Should, should, they could actually get themselves in a bit of a pickle here if someone else gets injured or a couple yeah. of them go down with flu see, or also, you, food poisoning or something you, you see, or they yeah, might have a team another point rate. as well are we not supposed to be preparing for the World Cup in 2021 as yeah, well we're playing okay. New Zealand yeah, right. in a test series late, later on this season so should we not have given opportunity to our players or oh, Lachlan is Lachlan's going to be around for the World Cup I don't really think so from yeah. there you know some of the players are out of form it, it would have been an opportunity but again who could you select because when you look at the squad of maybe 2022 20, a maximum of 24 players we don't have too many out of that out of there who is good enough to play international how many, how many players have we took to denver 18 yeah, they have 19 they've now got 18 yeah so 18. it's an interesting one but it, it would have been a time for for wayne bennett to experiment you know and uh, but he hasn't done they say same old same old and i would imagine it'd be the same sort of tactics boring boring rugby league and let's get a win <laughs> not good enough for me he, he, he wants. I don't even what, what you gonna, what what you're going to get out of the game if you if you're going to win? Yeah. We're going to get nothing, man. I think, I, I think the promotion of the game is the, the big thing that's selling so it, isn't it? We're trying to promote the game yeah. over uh, Caesar on the other side of the pond off the back of all this Toronto stuff. That's so right. We, we, I suppose the, from, the from the RFL and, yeah, and, 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 and building yeah. towards that so yeah. I suppose yeah. from Wayne's point of view if he's been tasked by the RFL that they want it to be an high standard game or they want us to win you know, big pressure on performing really really well so that it does sell then that might be an argument for why you what's, don't chuck people what's in made him, What's made him take it to Dem? What's Dem? What's just the trying to build the game over in, in America aren't we? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not thought, sure the place place to take it it's, it's, it's a massive massive audience isn't it you know for for sport if it does come off and you know we can stick where we are in England all the time and, and probably never really get anywhere I'm not sure you know th this is why I want to keep everything going the way we are because if there is going to be these expansion teams from New York and other places whether it's right or wrong what places they take if we are going to eventually get where we've got three quality full-time teams of ten or it becomes four or whatever mm -hmm. and it is mixed up across um, the country then you know it, and it does work and it makes a game a lot bigger then we've all been a massive part of something yeah. that's made the game of rugby league better if we don't try it we don't know if we try and it doesn't work at least we've had the i'm all for it as long as it's done on. right yeah and and you and you set you set uh, goals for that mm. the club who's, who's in it who's coming in needs to be set goals and need to achieve them goals over a set over a certain period yeah, yeah. it is i think it was one of the teams I think that's one what we haven't done with these expansion teams was it, we've just was it one of the super league and not, teams and not monitored them. you had a game over there many years ago and the, one of the highly regarded press said this is like American football without the soft pads yeah. these guys not mm. lumps out well, of each other but we've the, the but we don't have recently as well haven't they yeah. and but we don't have that like product it. to sell now though do we because we're sterilizing the game we've took the biff out of it you can't shoulder charge you don't punch you well, don't you do anything say that. I mean, they've done the same in rugby union to a great oh. degree and the NFL have made um, team rule changes to make mm. their, their game safer so they still but look at the NRL and state of need to get back to what it is makes your mouth water doesn't it supporters love a bit of biff and bash don't they yeah yeah and that's what all pays the money. Yeah. Well, we'll sit, well, New Zealand, I mean, England should win, shouldn't they? 
bearing in mind New Zealand are missing Guess a lot of players. Well, they well, should be able to beat them, shouldn't they? I mean, well, li li shouldn't listen, they? they'll be bringing some quality in New Zealand, don't worry about that. And I said the play of the seven deputies, hey, have a look at the state of origin two weeks ago when you saw 11 deputies from there. Brad Fittler gave the responsibility to the players, play with that vision and awareness, go out there and express yourself and look what New South Wales did from there. So New Zealand, don't be underestimated, they'll want to they'll want to make sure that they make that impression, put themselves down for a marker because it's putting pressure on players then for the, for the test saves that's coming up from there. And that's what we should have done. Yeah. That's what we should have done, but yeah. again, same old, same old, and uh, <laughs> if we get, well, the, I guess if we get the win, the last time they, the last time they met was in the 2016 uh, Four Nations when they lost, England lost 17-16 mm. at Huddersfield, mm. um, and there's been a lump. Well, and there was the World Cup agony, wasn't there at uh, at Wembley, wasn't there? Uh, when was that awful day? Uh, 2013 yeah, semi-final, yeah, 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 when, when Johnson yeah. scored. So. Mm. Um, Look, I mean, th there's kind of like the, the the second, the world number two status in up for grabs, isn't it? Because everyone knows that Australia are currently the world number one team. I mean, is is, is that what's on the line, or is it, is it as Derek was saying, more and more about actually uh, marketing, promotion, getting the Americans involved? Because the Americans, oh. yeah, wouldn't I mean, most of people going to watch that game wouldn't know oh. Ryan Hall from the Albert Hall, would they? So it, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Does it? Does it doesn't really matter. But, so, so at, it, it, but also, yeah. when you look at the international calendar, the Aussies aren't bothered at the moment, are they? Because the World Cup's gone, the state of origin, we know what we're thinking about there. I think they're just playing one, one test against the Kiwis, so they're not really bothered about the international calendar until the next World Cup from yeah. there. So our our point is now again, it's a time for us to start, not experimenting, but saying to young kids, hey listen, we're putting you in now, we're thinking about you for the World Cup, let's get preparation for it. This would have been the ideal time, then also as well, now we've got a three match test series against the Kiwis coming up at the end of the season, why not now? Sling them in, get them tested because it's all about pressure. See if they can handle pressure. We want to play a different sort of game. We want to play a game when it's more attractive. Yeah. We're looking at attractive crowds, more attractive and get people and put bums on seats. Just another point on this because um, when the fixture was in that, well, it was in, well the, the uh, train on squad, elite squad, call it what you will, in March, uh, Sean Wayne said uh, he was happy. He was happy that the Wigan players were involved. He'd, ra he'd rather play uh, with a few players missing than play midweek. This week, when he's <laughs> realised <laughs> that Castleford actually suddenly haven't got anybody in it because Luke Gale's injured and McMeekin hasn't been picked, that uh, Mr Wayne has a slightly different opinion on it. On it. But do, do these week? I mean, it's, it's a bit tricky. Should this be these weeks be completely blank and all the clubs told you, you can't, you just well, don't, that's don't play. That's been forced on with the weather, hasn't it? Yeah, because has, of the cancellations, that's all. It's been forced. Yeah, there's there's, it, there's, there's but, another. There's another. Has, but do they, should, should they be said, look, you've got to play midweek because we've got to keep this completely free? There's another. There's another consideration around all that, and you, you know, Sean, you've got to sympathise with the players. Well, he's he, lost, he lost his best players, and, yeah. the, and the effect it has on on a close competition. Yeah. It even affects clubs like mine in the championship because we're trying to buy or or do deals with Super League clubs for players. Yes. And the message back every time to to Kez is, we just got to wait and see who gets took off us for Denver and how they come back from that and right. how we get on. So everything was always on ice till yeah. after the Easter weekend. Then it's on ice till after Magic Weekend. Now it's on ice till after the Denver game mm. before we can start seeing if they're going to let that middle right. goal that's not quite getting so in. So that's a knock on effect that people us. won't really realise. Yeah. Because yeah. the other guys are dealing with dual registrations and low yeah, deals, deals and, and all sorts. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what's going to be uh, what's going to be an interesting fact as well on Saturday with a test match because we're going to have a centre combination from there. John Bateman's playing the centres. Well, he's not a centre. I tell you what, Rod, you're a better centre than him because you can pass the ball. I would imagine. But John there, and then also as well, per and then Percival, who Percival never got a sniff in the World Cup, doesn't rate Percival. Right. It's been said there, so Percival's going to be put in the centre. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting scenario from there. Yeah, a well, very interesting one. Mark Percival, obviously regarded as the number one centre in the competition. Right. Um, just, just quickly go around this. Do you think England will win? Just, game? just. I hope. Yeah. Win this game? No, I don't think they will. Don't you? No. There's no, a feel good fact uh, about English sport after that, you know, no, I think annihilation Nose of Tunisia in the World Cup. Uh, <laughs> I think no you know, will shock us. What, what I think is more important than the result yeah, is I the do. event that's put on. I do as well. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it needs to be a what, big what event. Is, what, I think what, what is the attendance? What, how, how big the venue is it? How big the venue is it? Oh, it's enormous. It's held about 70,000. Yeah. You have to. We need to do this in our country. We need to make the game, the day, more than just the game of rugby, mm. the result, the outcome of the rugby. We need to get bigger and more around that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think was it the London chairman said about his his trip to uh, Toronto at the, the weekend. 
uh, the other week he said it was a, a fantastic event mm. he said as an event it was brilliant great atmosphere big crowd yeah. and I think the Americans and, and Canadians are particularly good at that kind of thing and I just hope that it's a great event and yeah. a great spectacle yeah. and the result isn't that uh, yeah I'm going you know, back to what Gallery we were talking about before the show started was well, the double header at Bolton mm. yeah that's yeah, that, 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 that word mate that cost you seven and a half thousand right. pounds <laughs> <laughs> I think that is a very wise point to stop Derek Bowman before he gets into any more financial trouble <laughs> with the Rugby Football League I uh, just got enough time to give you details of the live sport coming up on our sister channel Premier Sports uh, the next live rugby league features the Toronto Wolfpack who are playing Barrow. Kickoffs at 9.30 on air at 9.15 on Premier Sports on Saturday night. And for all the action on this channel, you can log into www.freesports.tv. So that is all we have time for on this week's edition of Rugby League Bat Chat. It's thanks to the guests, Gary Schofield, the legend, the chairman of Featherstone, Mark Campbell, and the outspoken. Derek Beaumont of Lease Insurance. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you next time on Rugby League Badger.